Okay, we're here with Andrew Renz, Shuttleworth Foundation, legal. Uh, what's your position? I'm legal counsel for the Shuttleworth Foundation. Mm -hmm. Excellent. I'm talking about how open licenses work in general. So let's imagine that this is a poem I've written, and I can now license it. I own the copyright in it automatically because I've written a poem. Go ahead. No. I, own the poem. I can license in a number of different ways. One way I can do it is in the Creative Commons. So let's say I choose Creative Commons Attribution. Because I own the copyright, I can simultaneously license it under another license. So, for instance, I could put the poem on the internet under my CC um, by SA license. I could print it in a hard copy book. No. I, I could have some bread, though, yeah. I, I wouldn't order it. Okay, who ordered the bread? Um, okay, we own the license, we can license it in another way. So imagine I put it on the internet, share a like. I also sell beautiful handwritten hard copy books. I can make those all rights reserved. Because as the owner, I can issue it under multiple different licenses. In the same way, a project that's made by many people, so now imagine this is a block of code, which would be run by many people, could be dual licenses. Yeah, or the wiki. So let's say it was code. A lot of Perl projects are dual licenses under the Artist License 2 and under the GPL at the same time. This means someone taking the code would then decide about what they're going to do with their modified version of the code. They could either put their modified version under the GPL, or they could put it under the um, the artist's license too. And then it would essentially be forking it, because the fork, fork would be according to a particular license. So successive people who use the modified this code would do so under the artist license. Um, I can take it if you want to get it to me. So I ordered, I ordered soup, but then I also ordered bread, but I just meant this bread. I don't know if that came with a separate order. I'm so not sure. Should I take it? Yeah, of course. No. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Bread. <laughs> And then if, if, the, if the successor who had ta taken a dual license could continue to dual license, or they could follow just a GPL track and just GPL their version. <coughs> what it means for the wiki is anybody copying your wiki right now could make copies which they just distributed under their FDL, or copies that they just distributed under their share alike license. So, or they could continue to, to make a, a copy available under both. What they couldn't do is use a different one. They have to use either FDL or FDL. Does it matter where that's printed on the page? It's on the bottom of the page on every wiki page. Case, that, that's normally regarded as sufficient. What's important, important though is that the point of upload, it's not as clear as it should be. So at the point where, at the point where somebody contributes to the wiki, like me, um, I, I should get a little pop-up notice or something when I sign in for the first First time saying all of your contributions are going to be under this license. So we need to add that to our wiki right yes. now. Yes, and, and it's sign up, right? It doesn't have to be every time you contribute because you can only contribute to your wiki right now if you sign up. I'm pretty sure because I've done it. Um, okay. So, what's. And, and, and in that notice will say all your contributions will be relicensed or be licensed under our Creative Commons attribution, share alike. And at this point in time, you can choose where to continue with FDL. So from now on, you can just have the share alike license on your website. And the reason for this is the following. Um, we should get rid of that DL? No, you don't have to, but you could if you chose. Okay. For the sake of simplicity. Simplicity, yes. Um, FTL um, has been, I mean, not exactly sure of the version, but a version of the FTL has been declared to be the same as CC share alike 3.0. Yes, this is an agreement issued by the Free Software Foundation and um, Creative Commons that they both regard these licenses as equivalent to each other. And that was in to enable the relicensing of Wikipedia, which was under FDL and the Creative Commons. So, so low, um, Wikipedia was under FDL because of this declaration that they're equivalent. Wikipedia was able to relicense all of their content 
and the Creative Commons share alike. Not any Creative Commons, Creative Commons share alike. The same license which you're, which you're using. So you could simply migrate to, to straight um, Creative Commons share alike if you choose. Anybody who wanted to then use it under FDL would be able to, not because of the dual license, or, but because right now, um, the current chair alike and the, FD, the current FDL are regarded as equivalent. Now, of course, Free Software Foundation are very careful to say, well, we don't know, you know if there's a version 4 of a CC chair alike, whether that will still be equivalent. But right now, if anybody really wanted to use FDL instead of share alike, um, they could take stuff under your wiki and re license it under FDL. But that's a unique situation. It's just FDL and share alike. There aren't any other licensing situations where you can re license like that. It's just this explicit, specific one. So you can, um, so you, you can certainly just go to share alike for the sake of simplicity. Uh, if you choose. Or you can continue to dual license. It's also perfectly okay. I think we should simplify it. Don't confuse people. Just yeah. CC by SA. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. so, I, so that makes sense to me. So that's, that's your wiki. And, and the most important thing is it's, it's fine to have it at the bottom because that's for the user. If the user wants to copy you, the user must figure out what the licensing terms are and the title thing or the copy. So the contributor must get a bigger warning. So the contrib when, when someone signs the contributor, and upon sign up only. Yeah. Okay. Well, I mean, you know, if you wanted to be super careful, you would. Every time I wanted to press, you know, contribute, um, it could come up with a little pop up box saying, hey, we it's have under, a under CC license. But I don't know. I suspect your contributors, you only have to tell them once. How about if we put a buy the enter or save yeah. window, just say, if you're saving it, you're putting this, yeah. just a reminder so no there. No pop up box, just a little reminder, that's perfect. And okay. it's a URL through to the license. So if someone, if someone says, oh, yes, what's that again? They can click. Excellent. It doesn't have to be prominent. It can just be small writing, just a little link. It doesn't have to be obtrusive. Somebody doesn't have to click I agree. So they already agreed the first time when they sign up. Excellent. So in the, in the sign up, they should click a radio button that says, all, I agree all my contributions will be under CC by SA. Okay, excellent. Now, what do we do about our main site, which is just opensourceecology.org, the blue yeah, site? Yeah. Do we have to put a license terms under there? Well, if you don't, it's automatically um, all right reserved. Well, yeah, so, uh, all rights reserved, which means that people are not able to use it. We want to communicate that you can reuse this material. Yeah, so if you want to communicate that you can reuse it, but they're obviously not contributing to it, you could put this under CC by SA2. Unless you, unless you think that two. Uh, what's the difference between two? As well, as well. Oh, two. Not, not okay. Three point. Three point. Version three, yeah, three point oh, but it's as well. Okay. Um, so the most important thing is that all of the, the material on here is yours or made by you, or yes. if you use it under another license, you just say so. So you can put the same CC by say link here on the bottom of the page as you have um, on the other. And then we should like, if we, for example, I was at a conference, they took the video, so I should, I should say, in this blog post, this yeah. video is copyright or whatever, or, exactly. or CC by SA of the yeah. Bioneers conference. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yes, exactly. Okay. And in particular, you, you'll probably often be using stuff that's under open licenses, mm -hmm. but the attribution must go to somebody else. So the, mm -hmm. the important trick is attribute, 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 attribute to anybody else who made it or created it or to their conference. Yeah, like TED Talks, so the attribution, proper yeah, attribution. Exactly. So, and so TED Talks you're using under, um, they don't put them under CC license. They, well, some of them they do, and some, those that don't, you just so you just attribute because you're 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 not loading it anyway. You're just linking to it, mm -hmm. and then that makes a big difference to copyright law. So that makes a big difference. Yes, when you when you deep embed, you still haven't made a copy. You've just you've just made a URL. Mm -hmm. A URL is not a copy of a reason. It looks like a copy. We experience it as if you have a copy on your site. But in, as a matter of fact, this is just a string of numbers that tells my computer that if I want a copy, that my computer must ask the TED server for a copy. So in legal terms, that's radically different to if you had a copy sitting on your server. A copy sitting on your server, you need permission or fair use. For a copy sitting on their server, 
Well, you don't need permission. I'm asking them directly for a copy. All okay. you did was give me a reference. It's like a footnote in the text. Yep. You're not coming to Mozilla. No, you're heading back. Heading back. Thanks. Yeah. So, um, so the consequence is you, um, you just, you know, for any individual thing you're getting, you must just say what its source is. And if it's under an open license, what that open license is. And if it's not, just say the source. Um, and, <laughs> you know, if you think, that, I mean, it's unlikely you'll be really wanting to use something that's there. Um, okay. It's very unlikely to be using something that you want. Um, you really want to reuse that's closed. But if you do it, you can sometimes use it under fair use. So for instance, you're using it by way of illustration. Um, but that's always harder than using something that open license. That's why we use open licenses, right? Because they're easier than trying to do a fair use calculation of how much you're using, whether it's appropriate, whether it's a good reason, like or co criticism or comment. That's all fair use. So you can even use closed sources under fair use if you have to do a much more difficult cal calculation, right? Whereas it's an open license, it's just use, right? Mm -hmm. According to the terms of the license, but that's important. Okay. okay. So, and then you've got a blog. Yeah, so blog, if you go to, go to the... Who contributes to this? Yeah, actually, go go to blog.opensourceecology.org. Yeah, likewise. So that's people at Factory Farm and guest posters. You have to go to blog.opensourceecology. That's just embedded here. See, I'm just trying to take a look at this here. So we've got... Yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah. 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 So you could put the CC um, symbol here, mm -hmm. but for each one of these, you need to say the source. So. Um, so yeah, you've got this. You yeah, it's our own want, video. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's your own video. Yep. So you that then you just leave, and then you uh, let's pick something that somebody else made. Let's see if there is something somebody else made. Okay, that for example, somebody else made that's from Supported. Yes. Yeah, so now you you said it's from Supported, but you might just want to say yeah, bracket source Supported. See what they're. Um, uh -huh. So proper attribution is good. That's a good idea. Source. Yeah. yeah. And then, name the source. And let's see if they actually tell you they 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 copyright. They claim copyright, and that's fine. You can still do what you did, uh -huh. but you just say something like copyright Hamish Foundation. So you and that is fair use. That falls under yeah, fair yeah, use. That's under fair use. Mm -hmm. Although in this case they're actually implicitly permitting you by putting it up here. They're actually is an How are they license. explicitly doing it? No, implicitly. Implicitly. It's an implied license because you just deep link to them, right? You haven't made uh -huh. a copy. Yep. So, so they're expecting because they're making it embeddable, re-embeddable. Exactly. Yeah. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. So that's an implied license, but you, okay. you don't have to go into that detail. You okay. would just say, you know. Uh, source is supported and then you'd come to here yeah, and if they actually told you copyright because half the sites on the web don't then you go oh copyright Hamish Foundation mm -hmm. you know source supported comma copyright Hamish Foundation no bigger than that small that's mm -hmm. fine mm -hmm. it's just there somebody really really cares they see it okay the vast majority of us well I read it because I'm a lawyer right <laughs> but the vast majority of people their eyes glaze over it it doesn't matter if they need to know they'll find it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's all you're doing. You're making it, that kind of information available. And you just do that for every single thing. Right? You, okay. So you, 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 so you just sort of start a practice of doing it. Okay. Well, that sounds good. So as far as the OSC license, yes. uh, that stands, is, I mean, does it actually hold legal weight? Mm -hmm. So, so, so what, what, what you've got is you've got a couple of layers in the license. In copyright terms, you've got the Creative Commons license. Right now, that just covers copyright and some related rights. And then you've got two more layers. The, um, the ethical layer. The ethical layer acts as a, essentially in a contract between you and the person who, who is using the material. That they'll only use it in that way, and that you will not um, sue them 
even if their, their use were kind of marginal on the license, it was mildly infringing, you will interpret the Creative Commons license in such a way so that behavior is permitted, if it's within the ethical boundaries. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of like a contract there. The hardware is right now operating in the same way. Mm -hmm. At some point, when, when the other hardware license comes, um, then you will be dealing not just with um, software. Okay. Um, you'll be dealing not just with software um, and copyright, but you'll actually be de dealing with the um, the possibility the possibilities of utility and, um, utility design to design and a patent and what contributors to your website will be doing when that license comes so it's not happening yet because that license hasn't been written 